Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Hot Swap, and the other day we were playing the diamond and we completed it, and I got really excited. So you might have oh caught this God, clip. To do it, boys. <laughs> and that's the diamond. First try. You would have seen that if you were on my Twitch, which you should at twitch.tv slash the hot swap. Anyways, today I'm going to make a guide on how to do that yourself, if you so wanted. Thanks. All right, so for pre-planning, I always take the glass cutter Proper for plan. cutting extra loot, and I'll talk about that later. Very good. So you can only put it in one spot, and that's in your inventory. Next, I get the bagman. You can put it in the north or east window. I always put it in the north just so I can get the diamond and run out if something goes south. Spy cams. One in the north hall, one in the southwest corridor to watch your exit. Uh, north hall saves you some time. Thermal paste is almost a necessity for stealth, as you can get an unlucky guard. Normally you spawn to the right, so I always put it on the right. This is pure Place that other spy cam now. It's a smart and you'll notice here in a second when I pan over to my inventory, I like to take body bags, because we'll likely be shooting more than two people. So the spy cam just kind of watches your entry. You see the body bag, you don't even need the AC ECM if you don't have the skill, it's not a big deal. Alright, so when you spawn in, be sure you're going to be surprised by a guard 50% of the time. First job is getting inside. There he is. Right there. So, I would say place to hide is right behind this sign. Just kind of keep away from him and make sure you're not caught early, because that would that'd put a dampener. Take the paste and start moving towards these smaller graded windows down here. Now you can worry about this camera if you want, but you can usually put on the paste way faster than the camera can spot you. So use it on the smaller windows that lead to the placement. You'll have to actually pick these windows. Uh, just pick the lock on them, but it never takes too long, especially if you have the skills. Double check for guards once you get in there, but don't use your glass cutter on any loot yet. Wait until you hacked all the boxes. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So, use these boxes for cover if you need to, kind of play ring around the rosy if you, you know, see a guard or something. going to make your way down the hall. Be sure to unlock all these doors and watch out for civilians. So, that civilian, uh, you could have, you know, you can, you can tie him up or whatever, but shooting him is faster and easier. So, the reason we're, we're taking out civilians here is for a key card, which will allow us to get the time lock later in the heist. So next, let's go ahead and check some archives here. This is the uh, Curator Archive, if I remember correctly. We're just kind of taking a mosey around here, see if we can see any hacked boxes. So be sure you're thorough, because if you miss one, it's more of a pain to just come back down here than get it the first time. But that's kind of with anything. So with these guards, you're going to have to wait a second, got to wait for them to start moving. Um, you can never be too cautious because their pathing likes to go all over the place. So once it's clear, keep walking in. Keep checking your corners, pick up packages if you, if you want some, and just keep, keep your eyes open. So now that we've kind of checked everywhere, we're going to start heading upstairs. Depending on the stairs you'll take, you'll find yourself in the lobby, and that's what we're about to do here. Now, be careful both in the lobby and the room we're heading towards, as guards and civilians can just walk around any corner. So this way heads to the red room on the first floor. There can be a couple of boxes in here. Just keep your eyes open. Make sure it's, it's, it's very important that you're unlocking all these doors as you see them. Be sure you don't unlock the security door. Unless you just want to take out the cameraman. They haven't seen us. So just keep progressing, keep your eyes open for the boxes. So here is a room that has a box in it. And you can tell by the sign, the little plaque above the door. Here's your target. So you're going to open and hack these, although I'm not sure if it takes any real hacking skills. A good tip for avoiding guards is staying around the corner. And then move up these stairs. God. Stay invisible. Now I like to take this area in a circular motion. You can see, you know, another door with a, a little plaque above it and 
Just make sure you're you're entering these rooms, you're hacking the boxes, and you're leaving them open because they're a good safe space. No guards walk in there, no civilians check them. Good for hiding bodies, loot, whatever you need. So be careful in both the garden and the balcony. This is a cool little room. Sometimes I think it could have a box in it. I'm unsure. So this balcony here, a guard likes to sit up there. This garden, I've got a, guard. uh, a good tip is actually they can't see the or they can't see through the bushes. So you don't have to be as careful. Now that's the security room. Here are the maps. Now that we're walking around, you can see where the boxes could be. are all circled here. Red room, basement, and then main floor. You'll see the garden. There's a considerable amount of spawns, but I think we got lucky on this run. So once you get the key card and get all the boxes, you want to start moving to the first time lock. God. Careful with all these guards. Uh, they can really be anywhere in these hallways. So here's our last time lock. We'll go ahead and rewire and pick up the package. And then move into the time lock room. So you'll want to be extra careful in the time lock room because one guard monitors these two outside rooms and like the little connecting corridor. So we got super lucky here. There was another civilian. So you're going to need two key cards for this heist, not just one. So we're going to waste this fool, pick up the body, pick up the key card, and call it good. So here you'll see why we were um, opening those rooms. Because we're carrying a body, and that's a real big red flag for people trying to catch us. You, they can see you from further. You move a lot slower. It's just, it is really risky running around with a body on a heist like this. So we hide the body in here because it's a safe space. So as we move back in, the time lock should be getting ready to come back around. God. You'll notice we have to God. evade this card by heading to the other entrance, which is something you'll find very common. I like to walk the long way around those little cubby holes just because you can hide in case someone walks up on you or through the balcony. So. Here we are, time lock's almost done. Where's that guard in the other room? There's not much you can do here, but wait. Usually you won't get as lucky with the civvy killing, so you'll have to just find one at this point. So we got five, four, Stay three, invisible. two, one, and now we can enter. So here's kind of the deal with this room. There's going to be three guards. And the reason we haven't shot like the security camera guard is because with these three, it's good to have an extra room for error on your escape. Got one over here. Do you notice you can kind of see through like the little uh, openings, the little fence thing on the side? little half wall. You just got to keep patient, you got to keep moving around, and you got to wait until it's convenient. So the cameras, there's always two cameras in this room, and they always face a corner. So with this room being kind of a square shape, that means you have two safe corners to kill a guy in. But you also don't want to be seen by a guard when you do decide to kill a guy. So just take your time, don't get rushed, this heist isn't timed, just be safe. Keep your distance. See, he can kind of spot you there. God, don't stick behind close. him. Wait until it's your turn. The shotgun's also an important tool here because sometimes they don't go exactly where you want them. So you got to use this game's kind of faulty mechanic, or maybe not so faulty, where if you shoot them with a the shotgun round, they go flying, slug or not. So, on this particular shotgun, I have flechette, but it doesn't matter. So you see he's kind of moving towards our safe corner here because there's no camera looking. You're going to move around to the back and then the side, trying not to be spotted. You see you got to be real cautious not to be seen. And even if they see you, you got to make it quick. I was real nervous about this guy because I wasn't sure if he could see you know, through the fence, but it turns out he could because the detection is found in the head, and his head was up against the floor. Body bag 
So this one got kind of rough because a guard walks up the stairs, but he goes the other way. Be careful though, you might not be so lucky. With body bags, try to keep them out of sight. You might have to move them a couple of times just to keep them out of the direction of the guard. So this guy's coming our way as victim number two. Blast him in the corner with a shotgun, answer the pager, and bag him. I, uh, yeah, maybe I should pay more attention to the wall and my face. Uh, fine now. I didn't feel the necessity to bag him because I saw this guard was in a safe corner. Which means we can waste him. And since there's no other guards leaving him on the stairs or in the corner, nobody will see their bodies because no one else comes in here. So once you do that, you get your second key card and you put it in the time lock. If you want to play a little riskier, you can do that earlier, but I never find it necessary. Because right now it gives us time to do what I, was, uh, I mentioned earlier is collect the extra loot. So the extra loot here is just miscellaneous artifacts looted around the map. And you'll notice there's uh, some cases that have the little ginseng sticker and some that don't. The loot is in the one with the ginseng sticker. So you can see you can tear open that one per se, but it's really just kind of running bags back and forth to the window for the next minute and a half. Now I don't know whose idea it was to have that god-awful noise, but we can thank him for it later, right? Just kind of peruse around, check the time lock, do what you need. There's usually not a whole lot of loot in this room. A lot of it resides in the many cases that are outside of this room, but it never hurts to nab some extra cash while you're waiting. If you want more than what's in this room, I would actually recommend uh, kind of using the uh, cubby holes as a staging zone. That way, or when I say cubby holes, I mean like the rooms that could potentially have the... the uh, Things you need to hack, little devices. And anyways, if you put your bags in there, it gives you a safe space to kind of maneuver in and out with them. You can you can run back to them, you can throw the bags in, whatever you need. So never forget, once you open this door, that there's a camera right there. You can apply a camera loop if you want, but I'll show you it's unnecessary. If you have lockpicking skills, of course. So this part gets uh, a little more rough. Once you open the power box, keep resetting this until you get uh, a good path. And what I find to be a good path is, you know, four or less turns, kind of staying on one side of the map, or the little walkway. Like, that's a bad example right there, because you got to run all the way around. But you'll notice the timers, and it resets once that timer hits zero. So you're free to generate another path that's likely better. So here we see a good path, doesn't have too many turns, easily memorable. Perfect. So just try to memorize it a little bit. Don't sprint too much as you might slide right onto one of the pressure plates you're not supposed to. Always get real careful once I have the diamond in hand, but you should probably do it beforehand anyways. So here is why we have the loot drop right here. The diamond has a little special bag and everything. It's green. Toss it outside. Seven million. Now here's the hard part. Escaping. You gotta be real careful. You gotta make your way back the way you came and not bump into any guards. You have one guard left if you made it to this point without shooting one that wasn't in that room. And so you have a little bit of safe space. God, don't Doesn't take... It, it doesn't hurt to take loot from this point, so long as you don't have a guard sneaking up behind you. If you have the perk six sense, you can stay still for a number of seconds, and then all the guards and civilians around you will be highlighted. That's kind of useful, but make sure you don't get snuck up on. And make your way to the basement, and then back up. Then right now, it's kind of making a break for it. Now 
never be afraid to sprint crouch jump here as it'll it'll cross some distance with really low detection so be careful if you come across any npcs like this guy here as you have really weird pathing like you think he's going to walk through that door and then he turns right back on us that's not helpful but it's okay if all else fails we'll just waste him outside of a camera zone and and, and throw him in a little cubby hole once you move back up these stairs, you'll find yourself in the lobby. And here's where you'll make your escape. You can unlock this door. Oh, there's a guard out there. We've got to be real careful now. So what I do here is I go back down from the way we first entered the building. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll find the window we entered actually had a, uh, a ladder by it so we can escape that way. As you'll see, I'll speed it up, and we weren't so lucky. God. Stay invisible. So now that we're here, you, now that we're here, you'll uh, see me hesitate, kind of look around, and make a mistake. And that mistake was not paying attention to the guard that was inside by the door. So here I'm contemplating: Well, does he move? Does he not? I'm unsure. Never be too unsure. Now, see, he sees me. I yell him down. I answer the pager. No problem. But if you remember, that's our last screw up, and we still need to make it out that door. But that guard's gonna see us when we exit. This is called a little bit of improv here, where we bust open the door anyways, and we just waste him. That means we got about 15 seconds to make it to the band. Plenty of time, and that's the diamond. Yes, we did it, we did it. Hope you found this helpful. Be sure to check out my stream at twitch.tv slash thehotswap to see it live. Link in the description. Thanks for watching. And that impresses me more than you know. Your reward has been transferred. Enjoy it.